Hello and welcome to the Navability Tutorials. Uh, this is the first tutorial in, in, in a whole slew that we developed for ICRA 22 uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, this tutorial is going to do a basic introduction into factor graphs and why they are so, so applicable to robotics applications uh, as sort of depicted here. If you haven't seen already, we have a separate getting started video. Um, please find that in the description. Uh, we're always curious at Navability to hear how we can help. Um, we really want to bring navigation uh, to the world and make it accessible and easy. Uh, please visit us and connect with us at navability.io on the website or email us at info at um, and then Slack. Uh, we have a link below on our repositories or on the website. You, you can find links to Slack. This uh, tutorial um, is going to is, does the lead in for how we solve problems in, in a variety of applications. And we really want to stress that um, this is not just a random technique. This is really important. We can solve really important specific problems uh, and important problems. Uh, infrastructure management is, is sort of maybe the best place to start. If you want to digitize construction, if you want to digitize manufacturing, warehouse operations, um, and if you want to track uh, in real time virtual assets against digital assets, you know, digital assets against physical assets, um, how are you going to do that? And factor graphs are, are going to play a really key role in that. If you're thinking about automating warehouses, how do you orchestrate interactions between different vehicles, ground vehicles, and robot arms, uh, factor graphs are going to play a big role there. Um, in enhanced metrology systems, if you want to calibrate, again, you're me making measurements of, of a situation, there are variables of interest that you want to estimate, and factor graphs is a language that helps you do that. Um, then, sort of zooming out a little bit, just mapping and survey in general. So if you have some kind of survey equipment, um, and you maybe want a high-class total station in surveying to work together with a cell phone, which is a, a, a more accessible and cheaper piece of equipment, how would you combine those two bits of data and, and, and bring that value from both and from the interaction between both? Um, so survey and mapping extends naturally to inspection and monitoring. So if you're repeatedly um, viewing an area, inspecting an area, um, and, and in the later tutorials, we'll show you how we can actually detect discrepancies and so forth. But all of that builds on factor graphs. Um, and then uh, this tutorial is critically required. In this one, we won't get to interacting robotics, but you need to see how factor graphs work um, and, and how accessible it will make the interacting robotics story. And there are so many more things that uh, factor graphs are applicable to in robotics. Uh, this is just, just to get us started. So uh, think about a warehouse or a manufacturing situation. We have some kind of robotic system making a product here like this, this box. Right. What's the spatial um, understanding that this system has, this robot on the left here? Right. We're going to describe that with a, with a factor graph. So that's kind of depicted here with a little purple nodes and, and the edges linked between them. And we will do the same for the object that's busy being worked. As that object gets handed over to maybe a robotic arm, it's also building a factor graph. Depicted in lighter green, hands over the same. In darker green, and handed over to the next vehicle, depicted in red. So we're converting the idea of a spatial understanding in time into a graphical language that both humans and computers can understand. And once you have that down the road, you'll be able to tie these together and orchestrate between the objects you're making and the robotic vehicles or the human systems that, uh, and teleoperated systems that, that, that are working this. So just to give you a bit of an overview, what will you find in this tutorial? Um, let's, let's start with a, with a robot over here. Let's uh, maybe call him George. Um, this robot is going to, in this tutorial, travel in a simple square shape. We're going to build this basic factor graph you see on the left here with positions x0, x1, x2, x3, x4. Those are positions in the world. It's going to see a landmark. We're going to take measurements, these small blue dots, right? And this, this tutorial will describe how that happens. And uh, geometrically, here we have an axis system, x and y. So the robot is actually going to drive in a square like that. We're going to get confidence ellipses. Uh, we're going to get these triads that show us the orientation. And um, L1 here is a uh, something that's seen, and we're going to describe briefly what a loop closure is, um, and we're going to solve this non-parametrically and parametrically. So let's zoom in a little bit maybe on one of these beliefs, maybe X4. Um, you see these funny contour lines, right? That's sort of a more zoomed in detail. Um, in, in many systems you'll find it's just a Gaussian 
um, calculation, which has the ellipse. Uh, our work is actually computing non-Gaussian um, beliefs, full posteriors, or uh, marginal posteriors, um, and the beliefs uh, start to look like this. So we'll describe a little bit what that means, um, but we're gonna, you know, you can really go in a finer tooth comb. This is important for the later tutorials, which where this a single ellipse won't work, but you'll actually split into multiple beliefs, uh, independent uh, belief masses in the system. So we'll go check those out. Just quickly, how do you find the tutorials and how do you run them? There are two ways to do it. We have a zero install path via uh, the Navability app. Um, you can just go to app.navability.io. I'm going to click it now and show you. So that lands you here. Um, on the hamburger menu, you'll see we've got tutorials over here. Um, here are four up at the moment. Uh, this is the basics of factor graphs. It's, it's this first one. Um, and here it is. And you can choose your own adventure. And, and when you do, it'll spin up a system. So maybe you pick the Python language. Um, you maybe want to read it or as a developer. Um, those are statically rendered or uh, navability SDK. Um, so in, in the next videos, we'll show those. But you, you can choose any one. Let's say you just want to do a quick read. Uh, let's have a look at that. And, and here's a static render of that. Uh, the others will actually show you um, a running code. So let's just do it again. Choose your adventure. Let's just go Python SDK. Uh, this will actually spin up a, uh, a notebook that you can run yourself. So um, the other way to do this is to uh, the, the solver core is, is public and the notebooks are public. So uh, you can find it on GitHub at Navability uh, in Binder Notebooks. Let's go have a look over there. Uh, Navability Binder Notebooks. There are different languages in which these notebooks are available. So let's maybe pick Julia, uh, the Caesar API, uh, ICRA 1, uh, this is the same content uh, as I as I just showed. So you can download and, and, and run that for yourself too. All right, um, we invite you to come look at this and other tutorials. There will be a separate video walking through uh, the details of that tutorial. Thanks.